Hello and welcome back, and if this is your first time, then a very special warm welcome to you. My name is Sheridan, I'm a voice and confidence coach, and this channel is devoted solely to one thing, and that is to help people feel better more of the time. And today I'm going to ask a very, very big question, which is simply this. What is the secret to a long, lasting and happy life? Well, let me start with this. Ten years ago, about a hundred people in their late teens and early twenties were all asked what their major goals in life was. And surprisingly, I think, 90% said they thought the key to a happy life was to be rich. And of these a hundred people, the same hundred people, a quarter of them thought that fame was the answer. Well, there's an interesting starting point. But I've often thought it would be fascinating, wouldn't it, if we could somehow conduct a survey with hundreds of people over many, many years, maybe decades, to try and work out what it is, what, what is the, the magic key, what is the key factor to health, happiness and a fulfilled happy life? Well, what is the answer to this? I've always thought it'd be quite a fun thing to do. And then I discovered the other day that exactly this has happened. Over the years, many people have tried to conduct such surveys, but they've all failed because it's too complex to sustain something over decades and so many years, apart from one. So in 1938 at Harvard in America, a study was taken with 734 people, and it's still running to this day, but the results were taken after 75 years, which was about five years ago. And they took 734 people from their mid-teens until their 80s and 90s, those that were still alive. And during this time, all of these people were regularly interviewed at home. Their families were interviewed. They had health checks. They had brain scans. They talked about their jobs, about their happiness levels, about their relationships. And all this data from 700 plus people was gathered together and came to a very conclusive result, which I will tell you at the end of this video. But before I do, here's something else that's related to, I think, tackling that key question of how we can find long lasting happiness. Have you ever been on holiday and found the holiday to be a disappointment? So maybe you've scrolled through the internet to find that perfect white sandy beach with the palm trees and a blue sky and a five star luxury hotel and you've got there and you're on the beach and you just don't quite feel the way you hoped you would feel. And I've come to the conclusion that the problem with holidays is I often take me with me. And sometimes that might be your problem too. You take you on holiday with you, which means we sit there in this idyllic setting, but our brain is still working the way it does at home and we're still worrying about the things we worry about and questioning ourselves. And that's really unhelpful. And um, we've just got back from a beautiful holiday in the south of England in Cornwall. And we hired a lovely house and we were very near the sea and everything there ought to have been perfect. But for the first two days, I had me with me, all my little voice in my head banging away saying, you need to be happy, you're on holiday, you should be feeling fantastic. And it just wasn't quite feeling the way I wanted to feel. And then I started beating myself up for not feeling the way I would choose to feel and spending all this money. Why am I spending all this money? If all I do is come here and feel cross and a bit fed up. And it took me a couple of days, but do you know what broke that for me? The thing, the thing that changed that for me was a visit to the coastline. The Cornish coast is absolutely magnificent. And I can remember just the other week walking down towards the edge of the land and there lying ahead of me was this fantastic coastline. It is vast in its majesty. And there are waves beating against these rocks. And if you look up, the sea is endless. It just goes on and on and on. And eventually it meets the perfect horizontal line as it meets the sky. And do you know what? This is so much bigger than I am. And that feeling alone is incredibly healing because you realise the universe is so much bigger than us. And in a really, really good way, it makes me feel deeply insignificant. And I find that very, very freeing. But let me contradict that. Are you aware that the odds of being born are one in four trillion. That's taking into account eggs and sperm and all those that don't make it. So you have a one in four trillion chance of being born. Well, that makes you miraculous straight away. The trouble is maybe that we spend our lives coming into touch with 
other people who are also the one in four trillion. We don't notice those that didn't make it. And then we make inevitable comparisons between ourselves and them. So never, never helpful. But I just think that balance, you've got, you're deeply, deeply significant because you're one in four trillion, but we're deeply insignificant because the universe and all things around us is so much bigger than we are. So where do we go with it? So what is the real answer? Well, let me come back to that Harvard survey. So just to remind you, 75 years, 734 people measured regularly for health, uh, their education, their success, their job. And of course, in 75 years, everything revealed itself. Many were successful, many were unsuccessful. One became president of the United States and some were happy and fulfilled and lived long lives. But here, and now I'm going to tell you, is the key that this survey revealed to living a longer, healthy and happy life. And the key is in the quality of our relationships with other people. That doesn't just mean romantic relationships. It can be the quality of our friendship. It's not about how many friends we've got or whether we're married or not. It's about the quality of those friendships. A volatile, violent marriage is incredibly bad for our health and longevity. A very dear friend that we can confide in, a soulmate, someone we feel gets us and we get them, that is incredibly good for our health. What is very bad for our health, of course, is loneliness. Being lonely is toxic. And it's been shown that health factors are also affected drastically by whether we feel content and we have friendship or whether we feel lonely. If we're fundamentally happy, for example, and we get ill or we feel pain, we still get ill, we still feel the pain and it's annoying, but it doesn't make us any less happy. If, on the other hand, we're fundamentally lonely and without the true connection of great friends, then when we get ill or feel pain, all it does is add to that feeling of sadness and loneliness. So this Harvard survey proved beyond any shadow of a doubt that we live longer. Our brains don't deteriorate as quickly. We don't get early onset dementia. Of course, there are exceptions, but on the vast balance, if we're in a healthy relationship or we have really true good friends, then on the whole, we're gonna live longer and feel healthier and happier and more fulfilled. And I look at our marriage sometimes and I think, what, what is the key to this? What, why does this work? And I think as well as all the other things I've already said, it's that being able to depend on someone else or indeed other people. That feeling that if things go wrong for me, I know I can go to my lovely wife, Deborah, and she will always be there for me. She's got my back. And likewise, if she's having a tough time, or even if she's not having a tough time, she knows that I am completely there for her. And that trust and knowledge that knowing that someone or lots of people are there for you and really are there for you and you're there for them too, is gives you incredible core strength. It, it, it gives you a real trust that everything's gonna be okay. It's the ultimate safety net. So I think to draw this to a conclusion for now, and that was the result of 75 years and 734 people, dependency, the quality of our friendships, not the quantity, but the quality of our friendships is the, is the most important thing. And a sense, if I bring it back to what I said earlier about looking out to sea, a sense that life and the world is so much bigger than we are, that it's not about me, it's not about you, it's about all of us. And as we've heard said a lot recently, we are all in this together. I hope this is helpful. I would really like to develop this channel into some kind of community. So if you have comments you'd like to write beneath, please do, I'd love to hear your feedback. And also, if you can give me ideas of stuff that we can discuss and talk about, I'd love that as well. So if you've liked it, give it a like, please write a comment. I would love it if you could subscribe to ensure you don't miss any more uh, of, of the content and hit that notifications bell so equally you don't miss any more. It's been really lovely talking to you and I hope to see you again very soon. Bye for now.
برام 